السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلق الله سيدنا ومولانا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحبه الأخيار المنتجبين وعلى جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This is indeed a very beautiful day, indeed a very happy day, alhamdulillah. How can it not be when the beautiful faces of the mu'mineen today are radiant with the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the end of the blessed month? This Eid, Eid al-Fitr, is indeed a happy celebration. It's a happy day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected it for us to celebrate. Now, unlike celebrations that are not good, godly, let me say, Celebrations of people who do not subscribe to God. These celebrations usually, they have an element of selfishness. They have an element of what? Immersing uh, themselves. So people who engage in this, they immerse themselves in you know, personal pleasures, individual pleasures, as if there's no tomorrow. Um, and sometimes they're selfish kind of pleasures as well. When we see also, for example, how many nations celebrate the New Year, right? We see money squandered here and there. Unlike that, we see the celebrations in our faith. They are celebrations that are full of spirituality and social elements. Social elements, not materialism. That's one thing that we notice in the celebrations that we have in the Islamic celebrations. A big element, an important element in the celebrations that we do is the fact that we should think about others. We see that all the time. Look at Eid al-Fitr today. Look at Eid al-Fitr. Your fasting would not be accepted except... What? If you pay zakat al-fitr, if you pay the charity, thinking about others. Yes, I want to celebrate. My family wants to celebrate. But also there are people out there who also wish to celebrate, who also have families, who also have children, but they can't celebrate. They're needy. Look at Eid al-Adha, for example. That Eid also, what are we commanded to do? If you're in Mina, you slaughter a sheep, right? We're commanded to slaughter a sheep. To eat from it and to distribute to the needy. To distribute to the poor. Always thinking about the others. The du'as in the month of Ramadan, they seem to actually be disciplining us, teaching us this. Remember the beautiful du'a. Allahumma adkhil ala ahlil qubur surur We are praying for all humans, for all people. Not only people of our faith, people of our club, people of our community. No. Adkhil ala ahlil qubur surur Allahumma aghni kulla faqir. O God. Bring pleasure to the inhabitants of the grave or the dead. Oh God, enhance all poor ones. All. كل فقير. أشبع كل جائع. Oh God, satisfy all hungry ones. Oh God, please provide all the unsheltered with clothes. Help all the debtors settle their debts. Relieve all the aggrieved ones. All, all. كل, كل, كل. This is what this month of Ramadan is teaching us. To think about others. So, even if you were secluded in a cave in that month of Ramadan, you're recommended to recite this dua, Allahumma adkhil ala ahlil qubur as You're praying for everyone, right? Even if you are not part of a community, even if you are secluded in somewhere, you still have to think about others. Allah wanted that in our connection with Him, we always are concerned about others. Let's make this Eid, inshallah, the Eid, where we think about the needy. I'll mention a short story. Uh, Referring to the Sheikh Muhammad Hassan Kadhimi, a great scholar um, in Iraq in the 19th century. So this, this Sheikh, he arrived in Karbala for Ziyara, and he arrived and he was very tired and very hungry. And obviously, because he's very well-mannered, he said, let me do the Ziyara first, and then inshallah I'll go home and I'll relax and I'll have a meal. And then he did. After the Ziyara, he went home, and his companions, they got him some food. They went to the market and bought him something. He had a mouthful. And then he asked, how much did you buy this food for? They said, it costs X amount of money. And he said, a laborer, a humble, poor laborer, works day till night in the scorching sun, in the cold of the night, to earn a wage 
that is equal to the size or to the price of this meal, I can't have that meal. Take it away. I can't have it. Now, I'm not saying that we should deprive ourselves, my brothers, my sisters. I'm not saying this. But what I'm saying is, at least we need to think. We need to have these thoughts about those who are less fortunate than us. Can we think about them when we go, for example, out to restaurants to celebrate? Remember what we said about our celebrations? If you are a person of God, a person of faith, your celebrations should not be selfish. Your celebrations should be where you think about others. When we go to restaurants, when we go celebrate, for example, this salary increase, when you celebrate a promotion, when you celebrate a new house, a new car, passing the exams, when you go with your friends to have you know, a dessert somewhere, can you think about those who are less fortunate? When you go to a birthday party, can we think about those who are less fortunate? You know, sometimes when we go to a restaurant, we feel it's a kind of a cultural thing that we need to pay tips sometimes. You know, 5%, 10%, there's a kind of an understanding, unspoken understanding maybe, right? Can we make it part of our personal culture that we actually say, look, if I go to this restaurant and I pay that amount of money, I'll dedicate 2%, 2% for charity, right? Just like you dedicate for tips, for example. I want to dedicate, for example, if this birthday party cost me 100 pounds, I want to dedicate 5 pounds to sponsor a, an orphan. The dua of that orphan for you and your family and your children, Wallahi, it would protect you from so many evils. Ask those who have tried and have seen this. May Allah, inshallah, bless you all. Let's also make this Eid the day where we increase our connection with God. Look, brothers, sisters, sometimes we think of the month of Ramadan as what? Alhamdulillah, the month, the month is over. What a heavy guest it was. So many du'as, so many Qur'an, so much to do. Alhamdulillah, today we are free, we have a break. No, today is the day of distribution of the gifts. Today is the day where you actually exemplify, where you embody your servitude to God, where we supplicate to God. Do you know the salat that we just prayed? How many qunut did we have? How many du'as did we have? Nine qunut. Qunut is this position. That you stand before God like a beggar for God, begging for forgiveness, begging for blessings. It's an establishment, it's a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is indeed a spiritual thing. This day is a day of the distribution of gifts. We ask Allah, inshallah, that he may help us and that he may shower us with his countless gifts, inshallah. The first of which is the forgiveness of all our sins. And inshallah, not the last of which, a lifetime of purity, away from sin, away from any sin. Inshallah, this new year of yours, all of you, would be a great year where, inshallah, we try never to sin. Inshallah, with the support of God, we are able to do it. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal-Asri inna al-Insana lafi khusr. Illa al-Ladhina amanu wa amilu al-Salihat. Wa tawasaw bil-Haq. Wa tawasaw bil-Sabr. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وأمينك وصفيك وحبيبك وخيارتك من خلقك وحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاتك اللهم وصل على علي أمير المؤمنين ووصي رسول رب العالمين عبدك ووليك وأخي رسولك وحجتك على خلقك وآيتك الكبرى والنبأ العظيم وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وصل على سبطي الرحمة وإمامي الهدى الحسن والحسين سيدي شباب أهل الجنة أجمعين اللهم صل على محمد وصل على أئمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي حججك على عبادك وأمنائك في بلادك صلاة كثيرة دائمة عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله والورع عن محارمه My dear brothers, my dear sisters, the servants of God, I enjoin myself, yourselves, to observe taqwa, to fear God, to be conscious of God, to stay away from God what God has prohibited. This Eid, Eid al-Fitr, let's make it the Eid where we reconnect with each other. Eid is an opportunity for us for this reconnection. 
maybe we might have disconnected from people around us because of differences, arguments, right? We are humans. There might have been things or issues that disconnected some of us from each other. This Eid, my brothers, my sisters, is the Eid of reconnection. Is the Eid of Silatul Rahm, connecting with the kin. If you are at bad terms with your wife, today is the day to fix it. If you are at bad terms with your husband, with your children, with your parents, with your uncles, today is the day to fix it. With your siblings, today is the day you fix it. Today, maybe spend a few seconds where you sacrifice, where you, you know, connect with people, where you say, you know, maybe message, how are you? Inshallah, you're well. Or maybe sometimes we actually might be blocking others. We might be having this you know, wall that we're blocking others from reaching to us. Can we reach to them? Can we remove these blocks? For the sake of God, my brothers, my sisters. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is narrated that connecting with the kindred, connecting with people, connecting with those who are your relatives, especially the close relatives, it increases your lifespan. Disconnecting or cutting off the relationships decreases your lifespan. How? Allah knows. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his ways. Ahlul Bayt and the Prophet, they told us that this is actually what happens. Seize the opportunity, my brothers, my sisters. Increase your lifespan in the obedience of God. In the month of Ramadan, one of the things that we actually noticed, and it was a very beautiful manifestation, very beautiful. In many nights, in this mosque, the mosque was almost full. The corners were full with beautiful faces of the mu'mineen in this month of Ramadan. That's indeed one of the blessings of this month. Beautiful faces that are new to the community. Beautiful faces that are regulars, may Allah bless them, in the community. And beautiful faces that maybe have been attending in the past. Maybe they disconnected for a long time and then they showed up. This is indeed a blessing. We need, however, to ask ourselves, what can we do in this coming year so that we ensure that attendance in the mosque is full all around the year? It's a responsibility that every single person of us has. It should be our mission for the coming year. The mission of every single person of you. As agents of God, you need to be working on behalf of God. You are agents of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The unknown soldiers that are known to the angels in the heavens. Maybe unknown to the people of the earth. Sometimes we think that the month of Ramadan is over and therefore the banquet of God, the offers of God are over. فِيهِ فِيهِ That's it, it's over. My breathing in the month is an act of tasbih where Allah elevates my status in the Jannah. We think it's over. We think there's no opportunity around the year to actually seize similarly to what we have seen in the month of Ramadan. We think so. But we look at a narration from the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Where he would say to Abu Dhar, Ya Abu Dhar, إن الله تعالى يعطيك ما دمت جالسا في المسجد أو أبو ذر as long as you are sitting in the mosque listen very carefully as long as you are sitting in the mosque God Almighty will increase you a rank in paradise for every breath you take isn't this similar to what we hear about the greatness of the rewards from God in the month of Ramadan if you miss the month of Ramadan in the year you know where to go you know where to go you know where to sit and breathe and the angels will pray for you, the Prophet continues. And ten good deeds, ten hasanat, will be recorded for you for every breath you take. Every breath you take, you're elevating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by simply sitting in the mosque. And ten bad deeds will be erased from you. Is this far from the hospitality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Ramadan? This hospitality is open all around the year, my brothers, my sisters. We need, as I said, to be agents of God in this community. We need to think. Those new people who have arrived in our community, we need to connect with them. It's a responsibility upon us to make sure we connect with them, to make sure we ask about their affairs, to care about them. Those who are usually absent and they attended in this month, how can we make sure that they actually attend all around the year? Can we check on them? Can we check on them? Can we message them, ask about them? You know the WhatsApp groups? Maybe many of us, if not most of us, are part of WhatsApp groups, groups of the community. You can see the numbers of, the phone numbers of people who maybe haven't attended the mosque in long. Try to reach out personally. 
Say salamu alaikum. It's been so long. I hope you're well, inshallah. That's it. Personally, connect personally, not just on the group as a group. People need to feel appreciated and loved. Take that step. Take that step. We need to think, especially about those who have not attended the mosque for some time. Is there anything that we can do to encourage them? Is there something that we might have done that discouraged them? We need to think about these, my brothers, my sisters. As I said, we are agents of God. We work for God, not for our own selves. The mosque is the house of whom? Is it my house? Is it your house? Or is it the house of God? We need to behave like appropriate, respectful guests of God. We need to be inviting people to the house of God. And not regarding our own selves, our own biases, our own issues. Righteous they may be, by the way. It might be that, look, I was right, that person was wrong. But still connect with them. Still connect. Still remove any barrier that might be discouraging others from visiting the mosque. It could be a brother of yours, a sister of yours, a friend in the community. It could be a mother of yours, a brother, a father. It could be a relative. This is the day, my brothers, my sisters, that we sit with each other, we sit with our own selves, and we think, and we compromise for the sake of God. This is how you test how your own self is broken, your own ego is broken in this previous month of Ramadan. This is how you test it. Now put it on the test. Now put it on the test. Insha'Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supports us to be agents of His. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of your a'mal. It has been a beautiful month. It has been a blessed month. Great thanks, big thanks to those people who have served, who enabled our events to happen in this mosque. Blessed are those people who maybe do not get the praise that others get. Those who work in secret, but enabled these events. May Allah bless them all, inshaAllah, and accept all of your amal. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما